In ServiceNow, you're going to spend a lot of time looking at lists. There's lists of tables and lists of apps, lists of incidents, problems, and tasks. Throughout the platform, ServiceNow uses lists and list views to display the contents of database tables. In fact, there's a list view for every database table in the platform. There's lots of great stuff to learn from this lesson, but no need to worry. We're here to assist. It's time to get simple with filters and lists. Hey, it's Jeff here from ServiceNowSimple.com where we help you understand the ins and outs of ServiceNow, keeping it simple all the way. If you're new here, we would love it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button so you can get notified as we add new video content to the channel. Also like you to know that any of the resources that I mentioned in this video, you will find links to in the description box below. Now, let's get busy with filters and lists. ServiceNow's list interface or list view is a user interface page displayed in the content frame that's designed specifically to present lists of records from database tables. It includes tools that make it easy to sort, search, filter, and analyze list data quickly and simply. It also provides the ability to select a single item from the list to display in more detail via a form view. There are many ways to access lists in ServiceNow. The application navigator, for example, includes links to lots of different lists. Navigating to the incident all item in the app navigator opens the list interface for the incident table. Another method of accessing the list interface is by using the dot list command in the application navigator filter. You can enter the name of any table followed by dot list to open the list interface for that table. For example, task.list will open the list interface for the task table. Incident.list will take us back to the list interface for the incident table. Sysuser.list will open the list interface for the user table. So, with the dot list command, you must know the name of the table you want listed. But what if you don't know the table name? Here's a nice little trick. sys underscore db underscore object dot list will open the list interface for the tables table. sys db object is the name of a table in the ServiceNow database that stores a record for each table in the ServiceNow database. Yes, that's a table of tables. And along with the dot list command and list interface, you are now equipped to explore the contents of every table within the ServiceNow platform. That dot list command is awesome. Just remember it's table name dot list to open the list view for that specific table. You ought to check out also the dot config and dot form commands, two additional commands that make working with tables simple. Regardless of how you get there, the list view provides a consistent paradigm for all things list like. At the top of the list view, you see the list title bar. Just beneath that, you'll see the list header, which among other things, includes the column names and then below that we get to the good stuff the data rows and columns of data from the table each row a record each column an attribute or field the title bar is the name of the topmost section of the list view page the first icon on the title bar the hamburger icon is called the list control menu this is the context menu for the entire list view and its menu items affect the entirety of the list the view item allows you to select from a set of saved views for the list. With the appropriate permissions, you can set up the list as you like with certain filters, sorting, and fields displayed, and then save that view. Once saved, that view becomes available for selection via the list controls view menu item. Like with views, it's also possible to set up filter conditions and save those. You could, for example, create a saved filter to only display records marked with an active status. The filter menu item allows you to choose which save filter you would like to apply to the list. Note that when creating saved views and filters, those saved items will be available to all users of the instance for the given table or list. These are not specific to your own individual settings. For that reason, certain privileges are required to create them. 
The next menu item on the control menu allows you to group the data by a single column from the table. You could group the data by the category column, for example. This will allow you to see how many records exist for each category and expand into those categories as needed. You can group the list by any column on the table, not just the columns that are currently displayed in the list view. To remove the grouping, simply select the None option from the Group by submenu. With the Show menu item, you can set the number of records you want displayed per page related to the paging tools. To assist with performance, ServiceNow's list interface uses Next and Previous paging to traverse the list. If you want the list records displayed in larger batches, choose a larger number, but know that the load time of the page increases as the number of records increases. The Refresh List item simply refreshes or reloads the list. Finally, you can add a quick link to your Application Navigator's Favorites tab for the list. Simply set up the list as you like with appropriate sorting, filtering, and fields and add a favorite. You can then quickly access the list via your Favorites tab with those exact settings applied. Your favorites are your favorites. Adding these does not impact any other user of the instance. Just to the right of the List Control menu, you can see which table's data is being displayed. In this case, the list view is displaying data from the Incident table. If a saved view of the list has been selected, the name of that view will also be displayed here. Clicking this label also opens the list control menu. If the logged in user have, has privileges to create new records, the new button will be available. Clicking it will open the form view for the table, enabling the ability to populate and submit data for creation of a new record on the table. Another tool provided on the title bar is the search tool. It provides the ability to search the table for some value in a specific field. Simply select which column or field you want to search, enter your search term, and hit the Enter key. Only columns that are currently included in the list view can be selected. Data for the specified column will be searched, and only records with matching values returned. Note, the search is executed against the entirety of the table's data, not just the data currently displayed in the list. A set of wildcard characters can be used to specify the type of search being executed. The percent character specifies an end with search. An asterisk indicates a search for the term anywhere, and the equal sign specifies an exact match search. For additional wildcard options, refer to the ServiceNow documentation. The icon that looks like a heartbeat signal is called the activity stream icon. This icon will appear only if the table being viewed tracks activity, the incident, product, or change tables, for example. Clicking the Activity Stream icon opens a sidebar displaying a sequ sequential account of all activity related to the list. Clicking an entry in the Activity Stream list will open the complete list of activity for the specific record. The remainder of the title bar consists of the list's paging controls. Use the double arrow icons to jump to the beginning or end of the list. The single arrow icons allow you to traverse the list one page or batch at a time, and the label displays the batch size and current location within the list. Remember, the paging batch size can be changed via the list control menu's show menu item. Continuing down the list view page, just beneath the title bar, we find the list header. It contains a set of additional tools that allow us to further customize the list to help locate the information we're interested in. These include the Personalized List tool, Condition Builder, Multi-Column Search, Breadcrumbs, Sort Indicator, and Column Context Menu. Let's take a look at each. By the way, for those of you using this video to help study for the CSA certification exam, I've included a link to my detailed notes in the form of a PowerPoint presentation to use as a study guide. You can find that link in the description box for the video. Starting from the left, the first tool you'll find is the personalized list tool, the gear icon. Clicking it will open a pop-up which allows you to add, remove, and reorder columns being displayed for the given table without impacting other users of the instance. 
Use the arrow keys to move columns into and out of the selected box to build the contents of the list for your needs. Use the up and down arrows beside the selected box to set the order of the columns from left to right. One word of advice here, it's best not to change the inclusion or ordering of the first column in the selected box. That first column's value is normally used as the link into the form view to view the details of that specific record. So it's best just to leave it alone for the sake of consistency across the platform. Beneath the available and selected boxes, additional list parameters can be customized per your preference. When finished, click the OK button to return to the list view with your customizations reflected. Indication of customizations on the list is reflected via a small dot on the gear icon. If you see the dot, you've applied some customization to the list view. You can return to the list view default settings by entering the personalized list tool and clicking the reset to column defaults button. Note, any customizations you make within the personalized list tool will be saved for your own use. None of these changes will have any impact on other users of the instance. Just to the right and up from the personalized list gear is the filter icon. Clicking it enables what ServiceNow calls the condition builder. This is the list view's most robust tool for applying filters to the list. It provides the ability to include and or operators, multiple columns, and sorting as part of the filtering process. It also provides the ability to include columns not currently being displayed as part of the filter. Choose operators and values for one or more columns to build the conditions to locate the data you're interested in. Click the Run button to apply the filter to the list. This is also where, if permissions are available, saved filters can be created for inclusion on the Control Menu's Filters item. Just below the Condition Builder icon is a magnifying glass icon, which will toggle on or off the column search row. The column search row provides an additional method of applying filters on columns being displayed in the list. Enter the search term in the search field for the column being searched and hit the Enter key to apply. Wildcards, as mentioned previously, can be used within the search fields and multi-column filters can be applied by entering values for multiple columns. As you can see, filters can be applied to the list in several different ways. For that reason, I've learned to love the list view's breadcrumbs. Unlike most cases or most applications where breadcrumbs are used to indicate your location in some workflow or content map, the list view uses the breadcrumbs to indicate any filters that have been applied to the list. Anytime I'm viewing a list, I start by looking at the breadcrumb to ensure I understand what I'm seeing. If a filter has been applied to the list, it's important to know that before making decisions related to the data being displayed. And the breadcrumb is functional. Clicking on any filter condition included in the breadcrumb will clear all other filters to the right. Clicking on the breadcrumb divider will allow you to remove a single condition. Clicking on the last breadcrumb item will refresh the list. And clicking the all breadcrumb item will clear all filters. The breadcrumbs also serve as a great tool for learning how filters are applied by default. I'd suggest playing around with the different methods of filtering and using columns of different data types. Apply the filters and check out the breadcrumbs to see how the ServiceNow list view applies filters by default. It's pretty interesting. The remainder of the list header is comprised of the column labels and the column context menus. The column labels displayed on the list view come from the database table's field labels values. As fields are created for a database table, both a field name and a field label are required. The field name is the actual name of the field in the database system, and it has to follow rules excluding certain characters and spaces. These are the identifiers used in coding and SQL statements. The field label is a sort of pretty name for the field that gets used for display purposes. These are what you're seeing in the list view's column labels. Clicking on a column label will toggle sorting the list by that column's data, ascending and descending. 
To the left of each column label is the column's context menu. Clicking it will open a menu of items related specifically to that column. Some of these items will be covered in a future lesson, but let's briefly look at a few of the options. Show Visual Task Board allows you to create what ServiceNow calls a visual task board based upon the specific column. This is only available on lists containing task records like incident, problem, and my work, and we will cover these in more detail in another lesson. The bar chart and pie chart items allow you to view the data grouped by the specified column in a bar chart or a pie chart format. The configure item is only displayed if you have the admin role and it allows access to advanced configuration options. Import and export provides the ability to insert or update the table with data from an Excel spreadsheet or save the data in several different formats. Finally, the update selected and update all menu items provide the ability to update one or more fields on multiple rows at the same time. The list view provides lots of its functionality by way of context menus. It has three context menus and we've already talked about two. The very top hamburger icon, remember, is the list control menu and its context is the entirety of the list. We also talked about the column context menu. That's the hamburger icon next to each of the column headings. And you click on that, you'll get a list of menu items related specifically to that column. There's one more context menu to mention, and that's the field context menu. Simply right click on any field in the table to open a menu of items related specifically to that field or that record. The options available in the field context menu vary depending on the table being viewed and the type of data residing in the specific field. The show matching and filter out menu items provide yet another method of applying filters to the list. Show matching will filter the table to only include records that contain that value for that field. Filter out displays records containing anything but that value in that field. Copy URL and copy sysid enable the ability to get a handle on the specific record via the clipboard. With copy URL, the clipboard is populated with a URL that can be used to access the details of that specific record in a form view. That URL could then be sent to another user as a link to open the specific record. Copy sysid populates the clipboard with the database sysid value for the specified record. Sysids are lower level identifiers that exist within the database. Most often they're used by developers and administrators to troubleshoot issues or to leverage in some development activity. The assign tag menu item allows you to associate the specified record with a tag. ServiceNow's tagging capability allows you to assign text-based labels to items like records to further organize and group related items. Tags can then be used to provide additional sorting, filtering, and notification capabilities. With the appropriate permissions, each row on a record in the list view will begin with a checkbox. These checkboxes allow for multiple records to be selected for inclusion in some multi-record activity. The Actions on Selected Rows drop down at the bottom of the table provides a list of activities that can be executed on the group of selected records. To the right of the checkbox, the Information icon provides the ability to display a quick preview of the record in a pop-up without leaving the list. The record's full detail form can be accessed from the preview by clicking the Open Record button. It's also possible to open the record's full detail form by clicking the linked column for the record. As mentioned previously, the first column is normally reserved for the record's detail link. As long as that column hasn't been removed or reordered, you can count on that first column's value to provide a link into the form view for the record. Additional fields in the list can also provide links to view the details of reference data pulled from other tables. Within the incident list, for example, clicking on one of the linked values for the caller column will open the details for that specific caller. And with that, I've reached the end of my ServiceNow list list. I hope the content was helpful. If it was, give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you. Any suggestions or questions, just drop us a comment. As always, we'd love for you to consider subscribing to the channel. But I will see you in the next video where we take a deep dive into form views 
in servicenow.